Good morning. It is dry. Thank God for that, because I was worried about today's weather. 50% chance of rain. I've brought my day shelter with me, but we are here at Orchard Lakes. And today I'm fishing Main Lake. Now, Main Lake isn't the main carp water here at Orchard, but it's still a fantastic lake. It's not overly big, um, but I've seen some absolute lumps in here before, just walking around, and I've fished here a few times before, and I've had some nice carp out of here, but the reason why I wanna fish here today is because I'm only on a day session, so it's only gonna be a quick one, um, and I think the carp lake might be a little bit too tricky to maybe catch one or two out of, so, I've come to this lake today. There are other species in here. We won't talk about Mr. Barry, but there are some really nice tench in here. So I wouldn't mind a nice tench if there's no carp feeding. But I've just walked around a lake. Not a lot of sign of fish, but I think I'm gonna fish one side of the island. So here we go then guys. I've got a little mesh bag with a foam, a bit of foam on because it's quite silty in here and a Parker Bates fruit and nut wafter. On, st on my standard IQD rig. Let's get it out. Now, whilst I was setting up, there was a lot of fish, only smaller fish, but a lot of fish jumping, crashing, boshing, moving all over to the, my left-hand side as I'm looking out on the lake. So I've sent that right-hand one over to where the last one moved. Um, I say it was only small fish, but fish are fish. And then the, these conditions in winter time, it's important to make sure that you just get on the fish, whether it's small, big, whatever, catching fish is the priority. Right, so I'm finally set up. Let me go through everything with you. I've got the helicopter out. Um, but yeah, basically, here's my two rods out. Um, on the right-hand rod, as I showed you earlier, I'm fishing with a Parker Bates cork dust wafter. And then on the left-hand rod, I've got a pop-up. Now, any of you guys who know me or have been watching me will know that I don't favour pop-ups because of the unnatural look. I, I think it looks unnatural, but I'll talk about that more later on. But the left-hand rod is on a stiff hinge rig, and that's out towards the edge of the island where the reeds are. See the reeds sticking out just there? I'm just in a little bit from there. And then right-hand rod is out across to where I saw one jump in. It's in line with that left-hand tree stump sticking out here, but it's not as far as that. It's, it's about halfway from me and that. So there we go. I'm gonna sit in the helicopter, make up some more PVA mesh, and uh, yeah, try and look busy. That left-hand rod has literally been out for probably two minutes, and I've just had a little knock on it. There, also, there are crayfish in here, so I'm going to keep reeling in every couple of hours and just checking my bait, making sure it's still on there and that we're all good. Well, I hope it stays nice and dry. It is at the moment, touch wood, but tomorrow I'm actually filming for the Christmas special and I've got a couple of guests, hopefully, joining me, so that's going to be super fun. Um, I won't go too much into that. I really want to tell you, but I can't. But yeah, it's going to be out on Christmas Day. Christmas Day's a Sunday, so... It's an upload day. Oh, I'm absolutely buzzing for it. It's not going to be a super long video. It's not going to be an in-depth video. It's going to be super simple, but it's going to include hopefully a couple of guests. And I'm hoping the weather tomorrow is going to be okay because it's looking pretty dodgy. <laughs> So in my little PVA mix, I've got 14 mil Parker Bates OG fruit and nut with some fruit and nut sauce and fruit and nut magic dust on top. Look at all the little particles and fleck. See a bit of eggshell in there. That's brilliant. Packed full of nutrients. Hopefully that will attract the fish. Well, there's only one other gent fishing here today. Down to my left, probably about 
six or seven swims down. He's just come over to chat to chat with me. Um, he's with his son and they're feeder fishing. So he says he comes here quite often, um, probably once a month or so. Um, and he says he loves it, you know, he's just got back into his fishing. Well, that's what it's all about. He's just got back into his fishing. He was on the match lake, just getting back into things. He got fed up of catching small fish. Some people do, some people don't. He did. He's come onto this lake and he said he's had a couple of nice carp out of it between sort of 10 and 12 pounds. So, I mean, that's ideal. If I catch one of them today, it'll be a great success. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've got a little thing going on at the moment with one of my mates. I don't know what it is. <sighs> Every time there's an opportunity to say great success. It's, it's the whole Borat thing, isn't it? Has anyone seen Borat? Great success. Oh, I can't help it. I just can't help it. It's got, you know, when you act, like get a certain phrase or a certain thing into your vocabulary and you end up saying it. What was that? Big fish. Well, there was a big fish just moved right there. My spot is slightly to the left, not a million miles away. Get your head down, boy. Right, well, I just want to quickly say, guys, please, please, please make sure you've updated your rod licenses because for the first time ever, some guy's walked around and he's from the environmental agency and he's checking rod licenses. My God, did I panic because I've always had the little um, slip that I've kept in my wallet. But this year I was like, no, I'll do it online. I'll get it on my phone and I can just show it on my phone and got to carry that little card around with me. Well, <laughs> he came over to me. And he said, yeah, check and rod licenses. I thought, yep, no problem. I've got mine. No issues whatsoever. So he's like, yeah, can I just check it? And I'm like, yeah. So I get my phone out. And I'm like, did they text it to me or did they email it to me? So I'm going through my texts, trying to find it. Can't find it. Emails. I go into my email. So I go into my email app. I'll type in rod or type in license or fishing, whatever. I'm typing in all these things and the email's not coming up. And I'm like, oh my God. And he's saying, he said to me, um, usually they can check it. So he can, he's got an app on his phone so he can put in my details and it'll find up, uh, sorry, it'll come up um, and he'll be able to find where I've, where I've got a license or not. Turns out he didn't have his phone with him. So at this point, it looks like I haven't got a license and I'm panicking trying to find it, but I knew I had it. Um, he goes, hang on. He goes, I'll just go and grab my phone out my car and come back. So he's gone to get his phone and um, I've gone onto Safari on my phone and gone onto the website, Hotmail website, and put in my details on there, typed in rod and bang, there it was, it came straight up. So I was like, phew, sigh of relief. He came back over, double checked it, everything was fine. But my God, that is the first time I've ever had anyone check my rod license in, well, ever. And I'm 30, so that's pretty nuts. But this is a big reminder to anybody, please update, check your rod licenses, know where they are so that if those guys come around and ask you they're, they're nice guys they're polite guys they're just doing their job but if they come around and ask you make sure you know how to access it and where it is so you don't look like a muppet like i did on the bank so before i get any further into this video and forget i am giving away a free flat spot if anybody wants to enter their chance to win a free flat spot it's the original one not the fruit and nut one that's just been released or being released um yeah it's like a proper like monster crabby smell but yeah, it's, he it's basically hemp oil on steroids. Honestly, it's it's an incredible product. Um, you can add it to your spot mixes, add it to your PVA bags or your, your mesh bags or put it on your hook bait or, you know, you can do anything with it really. Um, but it's a super cool product, super good. And it does create, it does, it does what it says on the tub. It creates a flat spot. And um, not only when you cast, cast it out and it hits the water and sinks down to the bottom it will create a flat spot then but what will happen is like it will still stay on your on your bait so that if another fish comes into the area in an hour's time and starts like sort of grub grubbling around on your bait it will release more of the flat spot so then you can then see when fish are feeding and being active on your spot so yeah incredible product if you want to win um, a free one of these. I'm, I've just got one to give away. Um, write flat spot in the comments below and I'll pick someone at random to win a free flat spot. The difference in the fish activity between the summer and the winter is incredible. As soon as the water gets cold, the fish just shut right off. It's super, super hard fishing. Um, yeah, there's just not a lot to say really. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling a bit to be honest with you. And it's as the hours are ticking away, um, there's more and more chance that I'm staring a blank in the face. Okay, so I was just going to touch on my opinion on pop-ups. Now, I'm not saying that my opinion's right. I'm not saying it's factual. I'm not saying it's correct. Obviously, 
still fresh to the game. I'm still fresh to carp fishing and new to it all, to a degree. Um, I've never caught a fish on a pop-up. Now, I haven't extensively used pop-ups. In fact, I usually quite avoid pop-ups because in my eyes, the way I see it is it looks so unnatural, the way it's presented in, in the water. So, I mean, I know fish, well, we're told fish aren't as intelligent as humans and that's pretty much, uh, again, I'm not saying it's factual, but I think we pretty much all know that. Humans are incredibly intelligent, but if you went to McDonald's and there was a free burger um, that hadn't been touched, it was brand new, just been cooked and you could see it was fresh and they put it down on the counter and all of a sudden it's just started levitating and floating in the air, would you eat it? Because, I don't know, it, it would seem odd, wouldn't it? And, and that's the way I feel about fish, you know, you can put a, a bed of bait down and if you fish a pop-up over it, the bait just stands out. It doesn't look natural. It's just, why is it set up? Now, for me, if I'm a fish, I look at that bait and I go, that looks a bit odd. I don't trust that and shy away from it. Having said that, I've seen so much underwater footage of fish being inquisitive because, because it's floating up or because it's a high vis or because it's, it's different. The fish are more intrigued by it and they want to they want to use their mouth to feel out what it is or, or just sort of they show an interest in it because it's different. So there's arguments for and there's arguments against. Now, I know obviously big fish have been caught on pop-ups. I know they're a thing. Companies sell them. People use them because they're good and they do work. But just because I've never caught one on one and for me it looks unnatural, it puts me off them. But I'm not going to stop using them because I'm going to keep using pop-ups. I'm using a pop-up today. I'm hoping that I can catch a nice fish on a pop-up and it completely changed my mind. I've got a video coming out soon as well. It's going to be another head-to-head -head, um, and it's going to be a bright yellow pop-up versus a bright orange pop-up, which is going to be interesting because I'm going to fish a whole session on pop-ups and we're going to see which one is more favourable. But yeah, anyway, that's all to come. That's just a little thing for me on pop-ups. I'm not saying they're a bad product. I'm not saying that they don't work because I know they do and I know they're good and I know people use them. But in my eyes, I just think it looks so unnatural. I would much rather use a natural bait to, in to entice the fish. Having said that, <laughs> I always dislike the idea of using fake corn. Well, it turns out I've caught a lot of nice carp this year on fake corn. So, you know, I, I stand corrected. Um, and yeah, I'm going to keep using pop-ups and hopefully I'm going to be able to start nailing some decent carp on some pop-ups. Well, I just had my first run on the pop-up rig. Um, but yeah, no fish. <laughs> it just went, I don't know. It, it, it went, dude, 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 like it was on. And then by the time I got to the rod and picked it up, it, it was off. <laughs> so I don't know if it was a liner or, um, I don't know if a fish just caught the line as it was swimming and just come off or... Well, I guess it must have, because if it was hooked, it wouldn't have come off that easily. But, looking at the pop-up, it looks like crayfish have been at it, or small fish have been at it, because... Look, you can see it's been chewed away. See it? Just been little... Something's been on the side of that. Just chewing that away. I want to get another one on, get it back out there. Um, and then, honestly, I've only got a few hours left because, like I said, it was going to be a short day session today and there's not been a lot to report. That run is the only run I've had all day. So let's hope it happens again and let's hope we can actually hook up. Well, I'm cold and I've caught no fish. To be honest with you, I could have brought the 10 foot rods today. 12 foot rods are a bit big for this lake but um yeah i want to get back on jimmy's lake actually the, the main specimen carp lake down here because we came here in the summer me jordan and liam we fished that and we didn't have the best time fishing there but it's got some beautiful fish in there and i've seen some really nice fish come out i want to give it another go so that will definitely be on the cards um as it warms up next year but I might, my next few videos, I might start doing some different type of fishing, like rather than 
chuck the rods out and sit here all day, like waiting for a bite. I don't know, I might start doing some waggler fishing because the fishing is quite hard at the minute. And I just think fishing the waggler, it's a lot more, I don't know. I wanna basically, I wanna start trying to catch some different species of fish. Perch, mainly. I think perch would be quite good. Now I can do some drop shotting for perch, can't I, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I've got some different ideas, different things I want to do. And um, I might, in the next few videos, approach my fishing a little bit differently um, rather than just sort of sitting behind two rods, waiting for one of them to go. Um, I know people are saying, like, oh, you have to be active and you need to find the fish. But, I mean, what can you do? You can move around the lake. You can keep your eyes peeled on where the fish are showing. Um you can cast to different areas. There's only so much you can do. And then it becomes a point of where it's like, you're just sitting and waiting. Um, yeah. I don't know, I wanna be a bit more active. So I might go in search of some different species, see if we can catch some different, cups, some different types of fish and get them on the channel. You know, and as I've always said, I just, for me, the main thing when I come fishing, I know it's to get away and stuff like that, but I want to just catch fish. I'm not interested in catching the biggest fish in the lake. In certain situations I am, but I just want to catch fish. If I go and catch a two or three pound carp right now, I'd be happy with that because I know how how easy it is to blank when, it, when conditions are like this. Well, believe it or not, we are starting to lose light now. This camera is phenomenal in uh, in low light. I've just been to the toilet. That's when I saw, whoa, a bit of wind. I didn't see a bit of wind. That was such, that was just such the wrong time for me to say that in a sentence. Anyway, I saw those three carp up right down the other end of the lake and they were just milling in amongst the, uh, in amongst the reeds. They weren't massive fish. Um, and I did, it did cross my mind when I went to the toilet. I thought, I sat there and I thought, I wonder if maybe I should change, um, swim, move all my gear up there. But I'm only fishing for about another hour or so. And I thought it's not really worth moving. I mean, I'm not that desperate. Do you know what I mean? As much as I don't like to blank, I'm not that desperate to go and catch one of them. So, um, I'm going to give it another hour or so. And then, uh, I will start packing away and that will be the end of the session. A little bit gutting again. Um just with like the idea of blanking i know like i said i could probably move up and try and get on those fish but there's no guarantee that i'd even catch them anyway um and like i say if they were sort of like double figured i'd probably move up there but for the sake of it for an hour i'm just going to stick it out here and hopefully we can nail one And that was on the OG fruit and nut pop-up. Come on, happy days. Oh, I'm so happy with that. It was on the pop-up. It was a common, which I'm happy with because I like commons. And it was in the last hour when I said, I really want to try and catch one to save the blank. Come on. The day shelter is doing its job here. Keeping me nice and dry. I've probably got about 20 minutes left before I pack away. So I've got one rod out for the last 20 minutes. And that's the right hand rod which is sort of more towards the middle there. 
it was over there to start off with at the start of the day but it's sort of more towards the island now in the middle and there we have it guys all packed away back in the car another wet pack away which is just going to ruin my gear isn't it i know in the last video people said um oh when you get home get your bivvy out and dry it off but the thing is it's like it's not sunny outside it's not warm it's not hot so i can put it in the garden but then i go to work i come home and if it's rain during the day it's still gonna be wet and how long do you leave it before it dries do you know what i mean and then i can't just like whack it up in the living room can i so i don't know whether maybe i could just like get it out the bag and just put it in the bath and just let it drip dry in the bath i don't know <laughs> maybe i'm overthinking it maybe i'm overcomplicating it anyway thank you for watching this video sorry it's a short one and there was only one fish involved but and remember if you want to win that flat spot um just message flat spot subscribe you have to be subscribed subscribe to the channel and uh message down below flat spot and i'll pick somebody and i will announce that in the next video but thanks for watching this one guys please like subscribe and i'll see you in the next one